Hey guys, Jason Walcott from walcottfineart.com here. For the beginner or even intermediate level artist, color and color mixing can be a challenging thing to master. So today I'd like to share some tips and tricks with you about color mixing that will help you along. So let's go! Here you see a basic color wheel. Now, if you're like most people, you probably learned in elementary school or even kindergarten that the three primary colors were red, blue, and yellow, and that you could mix all of the other colors from those three. Well, that isn't quite true. Because of the way pigments work, it's actually more accurate to make your primaries yellow, magenta, and a light blue color called cyan. From those three, we can mix the other colors like green, violet, and orange. And not only that, but the original red and blue from the first color wheel. Also, if we take a color wheel and draw a line down the center, the colors on the blue-green side of the wheel are known as cool. And on the orange-red side of the wheel, they're known as warm colors. This is important to remember when you're mixing colors as an artist. Now here I've got laid out on the palette some oil paints that reflect the diagrams that we just saw. Now this, this is true for any kind of paint you want to use. It works for acrylics, it works for watercolor, but I'm using oils here because that's the medium that I mo normally work with. So on the left you can see that I've got what we would consider the more traditional primaries. Cadmium red, cadmium yellow medium, and cobalt blue. They look like all the diagrams you see in the books when you're a kid. But over here on the right, I've got the mixing primaries that I just showed you in the diagram. Quinacridone Regena, Cadmium Lemon, and Cobalt Teal. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why is this important? Why does it matter? Well, the reason it matters is because when we mix paints or pigments together, we're doing something that's called subtractive mixing. And the reason that it's called subtractive is because when a paint, let's say a red paint, you know, that paint looks red to us because when the white light comes in and goes into the pigment, the pigment absorbs all the colors in the white light except for the red and reflects the red back to our eyes. The same would hold true, let's say, for a blue pigment. In that case, the pigment would absorb all the colors in the white light except for the blue, which it would reflect back towards our eyes. So then the pigment looks blue to us, or red, or yellow, and so on. The reason that is it's important is because there's no pigment that is perfect in its absorption and reflection. So you're always going to get little bits of, you know, other colors coming in and sort of muddying the waters. So let's take an example. Let's say we were using the traditional three primaries over here that look like what you're used to. Let's say you wanted to make violet. Well, you take red and you mix it together with a little bit of blue. I mean, how many frustrated school kids have tried to do this, right? You mix it together, and hmm, you're kind of getting something that looks a little like violet, but I don't know. It's kind of muddy and brownish looking, and it's it sort of looks kind of like violet. We can lighten it up with a little white here. Get a better sense of what that color actually is and you can see it's kind of a dull sort of gray muddy violet now colors like that can actually be very useful in painting but when you're starting out mixing you can find yourself getting frustrated with that well the reason that that happened is because these are not perfect primaries cadmium red actually has quite a bit of yellow in it. 
it's a very orangey red, which means when you mix it with the violet or the blue to make the violet, it's that yellow is going to dull that violet down and make it gray. On the other hand, the primaries on the right side are more true in a sense. So if you were to take this pigment, which is Quinacridone magenta, and mix it with a little bit of the cobalt teal, now you probably wouldn't guess at first that this would make violet, but it actually does. You'd be surprised. Look at that. And compare that to the violet that we mixed with the other primaries. Take a little bit of white and lighten it up. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That those two colors made that violet. But the reason that that is, is because this shade of blue and this shade of magenta are much, much more closer to true mixing primaries than these are. So I think a lot of beginning artists get frustrated because they go to the store and they buy paint that looks like this because that's what they were taught when they were children. And it isn't really right, you know. So again, just to throw out another example, you can actually mix this kind of red from these pigments. So if we take a little of the quinacridone magenta and mix it with a tiny bit of the yellow, you can see that that actually makes something that's actually like a red. And it's not quite as bright as that red, but it's actually a red. So... If you're going to go out to the store and you only want to buy a very few number of paint tubes and start with a limited palette, if you get these three colors, they're going to give you the widest range of mixes that's possible. Because if you get these three colors, you're not going to be able to mix the full range of saturated like violets and greens. And colors can always be dulled down but they can never be made brighter than the colors you start out with. So this is a first little introductory into the world of color mixing. So I hope this cleared up some things for you and gave you some ideas about colors that you might want to buy if you're starting out. So in a future video about color, we'll get more into split primaries and complementary colors and things like that. But for now, I hope this gives you a little bit more insight and thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. Plus, be sure to check out my website, walcottfineart.com. There, you can read my blog, sign up for my newsletter, or just see what new art I've been posting.